Let me get straight to the point here. Obviously, it is Hamza Rashad with the Puffin Podcast with the three coolest friends in the world, obviously. So, um, can you introduce yourself and tell us one thing about yourself that we don't know? My name's Aisha and I, ha- and I really love pets. Oh, okay then. How many pets do you have? Two. Two? Oh, wow. Theo? My name's Theo. Yeah, I live on Mars. Oh, wow. Uh, yeah. do, you, do you live in a bungalow? Do you live in a mansion? Uh, I live on the floor. That's a very nice place to live, I guess. <laughs> Moving swiftly on, um, introduce yourself. I'm Ushra and I live on Jupiter. So we're neighbours and I live in a hole. Wow, well. that's really sad. What a really <laughs> sad way to start. Um, but guys, today's theme is animals. <laughs> yeah, do you know how to spell animals, guys? A N I M. Sorry, I totally do not. A N I M A I S. No, but you're ju- Aisha. You're looking at the sign, so that's cheating. You can't A-N-I-M-A-I-S. do that. You don't get any money for that. We're not paying you for this episode. M A L S. Done. Yeah, yeah. Well done, Theo. Theo's pretty clever, actually. Well, guys, we are going to talk about um, animals, and I now will start this round with a few questions, and let's see if anyone can get it right. Theo. I need to. Yep. Yeah. Theo <laughs> usually gets it right. Yeah. yeah. But are yeah. you guys ready? Yeah. Yeah. Are you sure? Yes. All right. Wicked. All right. Cool. Let's do this. All right. Four. A diamond necklace. Can elephants jump? No. Theo says no. Aisha says yes. Okay. I say yes. Why do you take so long to answer? <laughs> You're wasting our time. Don't do that again. Honestly, what's she doing? The answer is no. They are the only animals that can't jump. That's crazy, isn't it? How can uh-huh. elephants not jump? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah they basically yeah. have no knees, I think. Yeah. And do you yeah. want to know a very, very interesting fact? Yeah. Nearly 3% of the ice in the Antarctic is penguin pee. Just thought I'd throw that out there. Yeah. Penguin P. Yeah, I know. My facts are really weird. Anyway, <laughs> the next question. Guys, you ready? Yeah. Yeah. All right, cool. This is for a chainsaw. Now, are birds dinosaurs? Yes. Aisha, what do you think? Yes. Are you just copying the crowd? Yeah. <laughs> okay, then. So, okay. Well, the answer is... Yes. No. Yes, you're all right. Scientists think that birds evolved from a group of meat-eating dinosaurs called theropods. I think I pronounced that right. Is it theropods? I have no clue. Podcast. Ther- I okay. Pod. Just say podcast. It's no, kind of podcast sounds- is a different word. I can't Therapod. just say podcast because it's a different <laughs> word. Theropods. Yeah, sounds theropods. Like Costa, I don't know. Theropods. I can't hear it. I, can't hear to be, I think it's theropods. <laughs> Who cares? Anyway, here's another amazing fact. Yeah? Okay. Owls can swallow their food like insects and mice whole yes that's yeah. not a question that was a fact Theo <laughs> Theo what? you've had too many grapes though, honestly you're getting too too brave anyway next question one more question guys are you ready alright yeah this is for a country if you get this right you'll win a country okay oh and Russia Pakistan you'll win no Russia. no it's Pakistan Russia. you only get Pakistan you don't get Russia, Russia. No. Asia huh? Asia's Pakistan. not a country that's a continent yeah, Come on, Ashwa. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah. I don't know. Star. Okay, Pakistan. cool. Do cats have nine lives? No. No, they have one. Yeah. yeah well, so just in case anyone thinks they do, then they'll be wrong and they should stop watching straight away because they only have one life, but cats are very good at surviving from falls and other accidents which make them seem like they have more lives. So does anyone have a cat by, the, by any chance? My dad does. Okay, does he not share? Do you not get to play with the cat? Yes, I do, yeah. Okay, then. So, yeah. What's your cat's name? Blanca. Blanca? Blinka. Oh, Blinka. <laughs> Sorry, I thought it was Blanca. That's a Street Fighter um, character. What, what yeah. about you? Back to animals. Do you have a pet? <laughs> Me? Yeah. Yeah. What pet do you have? Dog. Puppy. Oh. Do you know cats are stronger than dogs? No, they're not. Uh, no, I'll no, just, no, no. Maybe I just made that up. But, yeah. I don't know. What's your dream pet? Like bunny. If, huh? bunny, 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 bunny. A bunny? bunny. <gasps> <laughs> okay. Either a dog or a panda. Oh, or maybe a breed like a half breed, like half dog, half panda. Uh, so you get uh, best yeah. of both worlds. Yeah. You know, s- scientists can make That's it happen. Okay. You know, a shark. A shark. Uh, that would probably be a bit too big for the fish tank. I don't know. <laughs> We're I, right here. I want an <laughs> elephant. 
Why? I don't know. I just always wanted the elephant. To ride on it? More like Aladdin. Like, yeah. I don't know, yeah. A flying Has... elephant. A flying, a flying elephant. carpet. Dumbo, that's Dumbo. That's Dumbo. Aladdin. Dumbo. A flying carpet. Dumbo. Do you know Dumbo was based on a true story? Yeah. No, that's I made that up for you. No. Yeah, so don't say yeah because I made it up for you. <laughs> don't say yeah. 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 Okay, do you want to know uh, another, well, one more amazing fact? I've yeah. got a fact. Okay, cool. Uh, okay. you got a fact? <laughs> yeah. Okay, go on. Share, share this fact for you. Um, Let me put my cards down because obviously you're doing my job for me. <laughs> when dinosaurs died. When dinosaurs die. They turn into oil. They turn into oil. Oil turns into plastic. Oil turns into plastic. Plastic makes plastic dinosaurs. Plastic make plastic do- like toys, yeah? <laughs> yeah, and then that means um, plastic dinosaurs are made out of real dinosaurs. Oh my God, that's actually so true. That's crazy if you think about it, innit? Don't touch any toy again. Huh? Uh, I think you will. Yeah, I think you will. Okay, last amazing fact. All right. <clears throat> Guess how old the oldest cat lived to? How many years? 23. 70, 70, 70. Okay, okay so Aisha said 70. No, actually, 80. No, 70. 70. 70 to 80. What about you, yeah, uh, 70 Random guess it, and it's 23. 23? 70. Yeah, 80. what about you, Athea? How many years do you think the... The oldest cat lived up to. Well, take what? your time if you want. Um, I'm gonna say thirty. 80. Oh, that's actually really close. Thirty-eight years old. What an old cat! Like proper, like a, a grandpa cat or granny cat or whatever, isn't it? Oh God, cats are because cats <laughs> aren't. Actually, you know, cats don't get like really old. No. They don't get like too old. I just pick seventy. No, they do, and they get like grow a moustache. Unless whiskers, the same, <laughs> yeah. Thing. same yeah. thing. Yeah. All right, guys. Musketeers. So the next round. Yeah. What we're gonna do is everyone is gonna pick an animal, but don't say it out loud. Mm-hmm. Just think to yourself. Yeah. yeah. Then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna ask each one of you to imitate the animal, like make a sound. Yeah. Uh-huh. So as an example, I'm just gonna throw it out there. So if I wanted to be a cow. Obviously, I'll just be very mean. And also, I would be like, do you know what I mean? Yeah. Um, so you guys have to do the same thing. So first of all, think of an animal. Don't say it, but think of an animal. Yeah. Has anyone has everyone thought of an animal? Yeah. 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 Yep. All right. Now think about what sound they make. All right, cool. Now we are going to start with you, Aisha. Yeah. So. You make the sound of the animal, and we, as intelligent scientists, will actually guess what the animal is. Okay. Is it a bunny? We're a, we're a, we're a oh, frog. 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 Mm-hmm. Okay, so that was really easy. <laughs> um, um, but yeah, well done. That was. Do you want to do it one more time? Ribbit, ribbit, ribbit. Ribbit, ribbit. Can we do a bit? Can anyone do a better one? What? That looks like a struggling frog. <laughs> that what is that? Well, don't then make that sound ever again, Oshra, please. That's going to give you nightmares. Theo, do you want to do Do you want to do one? Ribbit. What? Ribbit. Ribbit? Yeah, ribbit. Ribbit. No, I might not a frog. Oh, okay, then. You want some more ribbit, of the top? Ribbit, no, but no, okay. Do, do, do your one now. Um, okay, It's a hard is, one. This is Theo's one. Yeah, go on. Let me go last. I need to think about yeah. it. Oh, do you, shall we go to Oshra then? Yeah. Because Oshra, Oshra you, you've got your sound, innit? Yeah. I see it in your eyes. It's yeah. Panda. All right, ready? Do your noise. Ooh, ooh, uh, uh, monkey. Minky. Yeah. Monkey. Minky. What's a minky? <laughs> I had too much sugar today. Sorry, guys. All right, cool. Have you, Theo, have you thought of one yet? I'm an animal. It's not a pet. But I just don't know what it sounds like. Okay, so then you can't do it, innit? So think of an animal and... Like, I know what panda sounds like. Oh, I got one. I got one. Okay, go on. Uh, 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 uh. Uh, a truck parking up? I don't know. What What was that? Parking senses. But it's higher. <laughs> parking senses. It's... it's it's higher pitch than that. Okay, do do it one more time. Uh, 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 but higher pitch, like really high pitch. Was it? Yeah. What? Yeah, like that. What is Aisha? What's, what is it? <laughs> What's this guy doing? What's he doing? Is he making it up? Uh, is it a minky? <laughs> I think it was a minky. No. Uh, what is it? We give up then. What was it? <laughs> a fox. A what? A fox. A fox. A fox. <laughs> yeah. Since when do they make that sound? Yeah, when did... What kind of foxes do you hang around with, Theo? What, what sounds do they make? <laughs> what? No, that sounds like a horror movie sound effect. Like, ree, ree, ree. Oh, that's that's a, yeah. Uh, All right. Uh, so, um, guys, we'll never play that game again. Yeah? Especially with Theora. All right. I think the winner for the round 
With me. Was <laughs> definitely not Theo. Uh, and Theo would never play this game again. But I think that the winner should be you. You. Me too. No, I, should, I, I think it's you, Aisha, because we got it so quickly. The ribbit, ribbit. We just got, we just got instantly got it. Whereas Theo, we kind of questioned why he was here in the first place. Do you know what I mean? So well done, Aisha. You win a clock. But it hasn't got no batteries, so you can never oh, talk the time. Um, I don't know. I just made it up. You don't win anything. Now it's the story generator. We are going to pick from both hats. And Aisha, can you think of a superpower? Yeah. So what I need you to do, Theo, pick up a hat. Yeah. And in the hat, pick up a piece of paper. Yes. Uh, and Ashura, can you do the Oshra. exact same thing? Ashura. Sorry. The same Ostridge. thing. Just different pronunciation. Ostridge. Ashura. Ostridge. Okay, cool. Um, um, yep. Yeah. Thanks, Oshra. Did I get it wrong again? Yeah. I'm um, thinking you got it right. Oshra? Oshra. Oshra. God. Oshra. That's what I said. I said Oshra. <laughs> yeah, I said. Oh. Yeah, you got it oh, right. Oh, sorry. sorry. Okay, so guys, let's do the story. Okay. And um, so, uh, Theo, what does it say on your piece of paper? A princess. A princess, <laughs> exactly what you are. And, um, uh, uh, Oshra, what's more about you? Wallop, wallop, the spooky world under the bed. So I'll say that again. Wallop, what? That's that's under my bed. The spooky what? The, sp- the spooky world under under my bed. The spooky world under your bed. Yes. Okay. So a princess, um, <laughs> um, a princess, what? A princess who get, who lives in the spooky underworld. Okay. Und, under the my bed. The spooky world right. under the bed. Okay. Cool. Under and, my bed. And the superpower this princess has. Are you force sure? field. A force field. All right. Cool. Yeah. Oh. Let's try this. Um. And I think this could be even better than our previous story. But let's let's yeah, let's, let's see what we can do. Yeah. Let's hope. All right. So. Let's hope. All right. So, once upon a time, there was a princess who was climbing a tree. Her name was Princess Aisha. Hmm. Um. Is it hard? <laughs> What did you say? <laughs> this is a really hard. This is a really hard. <laughs> why, why does it sound that like you, you, you should have had a Pakistani accent with that? This is a really hard. No, you can do it. Come on, Theo. We believe in you. Um, Finish the story. She broke the tree with her force field. Oh, okay. She fell onto a bed. And the spooky world under a bed. Okay. And then she met a giant turtle with a blindfold on. Hello. The turtle said, leave me alone. But and then the, the turtle, turtle <laughs> tried to karate chop her because she had plastic straws. Mm. But then the princess flew up <laughs> onto the moon where she met... An alien. Okay, so let's just end the story there. Uh, but that went really well, actually. We, he, I thought, the princess could have met... <laughs> the <laughs> on Mars. Yeah, yeah. Like, yeah. With, with his <laughs> With his rope, he <laughs> likes rope apparently. Um, well done, guys. That was not a bad story. Okay, so the next part is I'm going to tell you a story about me. And, and uh, that true is going to be yeah, true or false. Yeah. Exactly, Probably Theo. Thank you for interrupting false. me. Um, <laughs> so um, this is my story. So guys, listen okay. carefully. Okay. And and this is what it is. So once um, I went to the zoo because I love animals. I love animals. There was lions there. There was bears. There was a reindeer. Um, you met Rudolph? And then um, I was petting a penguin, yeah? Uh, and this penguin uh, was really cute. I had a really good time. Yeah. Uh, and then afterwards, I wanted to see other sea creatures, but there wasn't any. So I was like, all right, cool. Uh, let's go see the tigers. Now, when I went to see the tigers, there was one tiger that was just looking at me. And I was like, why is the tiger always <laughs> looking at me? Like, what's his problem? Yeah, I knew he had some sort of beef. You want some yeah? dinner? I don't know. Maybe he was hungry, yeah? Or maybe it was Ramadan and he was fasting. I don't know, yeah? But he was looking at me. So I basically went closer to him. And then what he did is um, he jumped over the fence and he literally got his claws no, out. Man. Yeah, he, he held me hostage and he was like, empty your pocket. And I said, listen, bruv, yeah? <laughs> I don't like how this is going. I'm just here to have a good time. Wait, yeah? are there people around you, like security or anything? There was no security. This was, yeah, this was about 10 o'clock. 10 o'clock. So it was just, it was just about to close. Um, so there, was, there wasn't many people there. So anyway, he took my phone. He took my wallet, uh, my bank card. He ordered some stuff on Amazon. Uh, uh, and one of the things that he ordered was my book, Little Bad Man in the Invasion of the Killer Aunties. That's fake. Okay, why is it fake, Theo? <laughs> because, because a tiger n- no one wants press a book. screen. Uh, how do you know? Have you met a tiger before? Yes. Yeah, I have. Oh, yes. Okay, then then I take it back. Uh, Aisha, do you believe in my story? Thank no. You. 
Thank you. Not even the bit where he he, he stole from me. Huh. No. <laughs> Take my hand. Take All right, guys. Well, I have a confession to make. <laughs> it was false. It was false, but there was yeah. a bit of the story that was true. About and that was, I have been to a zoo. Uh, so technically, yeah, well, it was a true story. No, 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 I swear, no. I, everyone's, everyone's gone to, to a zoo. I think everyone here has yeah. been to a zoo. All right, cool. Well, guys, yeah. I think the next part should be funny okay. uh, and exciting. And it's actually going to be the joke part. Yeah, oh. the joke part. So everyone's going to choose a joke and try to make me laugh because obviously... I'm the funniest person in the world. Right, guys? Can we... Can we yeah. Yep. Yeah. Thank you for saying yes. I'll give you a five or later. All right. So <laughs> let's start off with uh, Theo. Do you want to try a joke, Theo? Um, what do you call a pig who knows karate? What do you... What do you call a pig who that knows? knows karate? Yeah. What? A pork chop. <laughs> okay. I like that one. That's, that's, <laughs> that's a good one. That's a good one. Ashra, your turn. What fish only swims at night? Uh, what, fi- what fish only swims at night? Yes. Go on. A starfish. A starfish. That's... No, I didn't like it. No. I didn't like the joke. No. I didn't like it, Ashra. <laughs> I don't like it at all. <laughs> don't ever say that again. Starfish. Sorry. Oh, no, I like it, actually. Okay, I, yeah. I get it now. All right, cool. Aisha? Why are teddy bears never hungry? Why are teddy bears never hungry? Ooh. I don't know. They're always stuffed. Oh, I like that one. Yeah, I get it. Do you get guys get it? Yeah. Always so stuffed because it's teddy bear? No? No? Um, my a teddy bear. Like... Yeah, I, I get it. You get it. Wait, okay, I have another one. Oh, oh I, she wants to redeem herself. <laughs> yeah. Um, Go on. What do you call a fish without an eye? What do you call a fish without an eye? <laughs> <laughs> That's so stupid, but it's so funny. I like it. <laughs> you get it, Aisha? Yeah. No. Do you, do you want to oh concentrate my, in this podcast, on your Aisha? And then, and then take away the eye from fish. <laughs> there you go. It took a month, but you got there. <laughs> All right, cool. Well, you know what? The jokes are not bad, actually. I, I, I like the jokes. I think the fish one was stupid, but I like it. I've got, I've got it. <laughs> no, but honestly, the jokes were actually really good. I like it. But what's the, what do you think was the best joke? <laughs> the, the pork bear. chop. Uh, the the pork, pork chop was a good one. As well. You did the pork Teddy chop. Bear. I like the fish. <laughs> One. Oh, yeah, I, yeah, I like that you. one. Yeah. Well, guys, well done with the jokes. We have word from David O'Duterty that a man known as Crazy Uncle Derm has planned to rob a bank with his nephew Rex. We don't have a full story yet. For more details, search for Samurai Robbed a Bank. The Life of Tracy Beaker, star of the the Tracy Beaker series, is once again being captured by writer Jekyll Wilson. But this time, it's Tracy and her daughter, Jess. You can follow Jess and Tracy's adventure in Wilson's latest piece, We Are the Beaker Girls. So obviously the theme was animals. Uh, Did anyone learn anything today? Anyone learned anything? No. <gasps> Parents are going to love me for this. <laughs> I'm glad I did that. Okay, well, guys, just a few more fun facts. Do you know, you were talking about frogs before, frogs can't vomit. If they have to, they vomit their entire stomach. All right, another one. Um, Some birds fought in order to find food. Farting moves leaves on the ground around and helps them to find worms to eat. So imagine like you're going to a chicken shop and you just start farting. Then technically you'd be like a like a bird. bird. Yeah, I don't know what kind of bird that is. And fly? Oh, 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 oh. And, and one more as well. So then you can't say that I didn't teach you anything. Um, do you know that cats can jump over seven times their height. Yeah, yes. I did. Okay, so um, that was pointless. <laughs> Make sure you're sitting comfortably because it's officially story time. A few letters from our valued readers concerning the last book. Dear Puffin Books, What? Where were the T-Rexes? I spent the last of my pocket money on Charlie Turns Into a T-Rex and I feel completely cheated. Worst wishes, Josh. 9. Whitstable Dear Puffin Books, I should have learned my lesson after the first book, when Charlie didn't change into a chicken. But I didn't. Instead, I bought Charlie Turns into a T-Rex, fully expecting him to turn into a Tyrannosaurus. 
Once again, I was lied to. I shall never trust Sam Copeland, Puffin Books, or, in fact, anybody, ever again. Yours devastatedly, May Dupname, 10, Banjacks on Thames. Dear Puffin Books, No T-Rex? That's the worst news, the worst. Sneaky Sam Copeland is a stone-cold loser. I could write a children's book better than him. Easy. Yours, D. Trump, 73 and 3 quarters, USA. Puffin Books, 80 Strand, London. Dear reader, well, here we are again. After a string of letters from angry children from around the world complaining about the non-appearance of T-Rexes in Charlie Turns Into a T-Rex, we have put in place measures to ensure that the author inserts without fail at least one mammoth into this book. Please find below a written-down, 100% guaranteed, cross-your-heart-and-hope-to-die unbreakable promise from the author. Yours faithfully. The Publisher Dear Puffin Books and angry children around the world, I totally, 100% promise that Charlie will turn into a mammoth in this book. Your truthful author, Sam Copeland. Chapter 1 Charlie McGuffin was late again, and he really couldn't be late this time, or he was a dead man. And what was Charlie McGuffin late for? That's an excellent question, dear reader. You all seem like a clever bunch, not like that dreadful crowd who read the last two books. They were awful. I think you guys are going to be my favourite readers so far. I can feel it in my bones. So, in answer to your question, Charlie McGuffin couldn't be late for his school trip, or he was a dead man. And where was the school trip to? Another great question, you clever reader, well done. The school trip was to the local zoo. And was he actually going to be dead if he was late? No, of course he wasn't. Now that was a silly question. I meant he'd just be in quite a lot of trouble. You know, we got off to a good start, reader, but I'm beginning to have my doubts. So, to be clear, Charlie McGuffin couldn't be late for his school trip, or he was a dead, not actually dead, man. Oh, come on. What is wrong with you? What do you mean, is Charlie a man? No, I know I said he was a dead man, but that was just a phrase. He's obviously just a boy. There's even a picture of him on the cover of the book. I take back everything I said earlier. You're every bit as dreadful as the readers of the last book. Possibly worse. Oh, I should have learned by now. I only ever get disappointed by readers. I suggest you run into the bathroom, take a good hard look at yourself in the mirror, if you can bear to, and then repeat three times, I'm a massive, bum-faced wazzock. <sighs> Meanwhile, I'm going to have to start all over again, and I want no questions this time from you people. Chapter 1 Charlie McGuffin was late again, and he really couldn't be late this time, or he was a dead, not actually dead, man, not actually a man. Charlie had 18 minutes to get to school if he didn't want to miss the coach which was due to leave at precisely 9am to take his whole year to the zoo. Miss Fire, the headmistress, had given them all a warning in assembly the day before. Anyone who missed the bus would spend the whole day scrubbing the teacher's toilets with the caretaker, Mr O'Dear. Charlie hoovered up his cornflakes. He'd spilled them all over the floor, flung on his coat and jumped into his shoes. Footnote. This was why he was late. Jumping into your shoes is actually very difficult, and it took him 27 attempts. End footnote. Trying to ignore the sound of his parents arguing, again. He flew out the door. Footnote. He didn't really. He just ran. Ordinarily, that wouldn't need to be pointed out. But because this is a book about a boy who can change into animals, I thought I should probably be completely clear. Don't worry. It's always very obvious when Charlie's turning into an animal. It's not like he wakes up one morning and bang, he's a gigantic insect, and you're left wondering how on earth that happened. That would be terrible storytelling. End footnote. Hopped onto his trusty bike and started pedalling. That was when disaster struck. His front wheel immediately started making an odd clicking noise and began to deflate. 
Charlie groaned. He couldn't have a puncture. But a puncture it was. Dug deep into the tyre were four drawing pins. Four? How had that happened? Charlie looked down at the pavement and saw at least twenty more pins scattered all over the ground. Somebody must have accidentally dropped a box and not picked them up, Charlie thought, without a hint of suspicion, which he really should have had, considering this is the start of the book, and suspicious goings-on always happen at the start of books. Well, that's just really bad luck, Charlie thought. No one would put drawing pins on the pavement outside my house on purpose. Anyway, there was nothing he could do about it now. He was definitely going to be late and miss the school trip. Unless... Unless... Unless I change into an animal, Charlie thought. Then he might just have the time to fly to school or run there super fast, change back into Charlie without being seen, and catch the coach. Charlie had been changing into animals for several months now and had learned how to do it whenever he wanted. It was choosing which animal that he hadn't quite mastered. No matter what he did, it still seemed almost completely random. Even so, changing was his only chance. It was a risk he had to take. Charlie dumped his bike underneath a bush in his front garden and looked around to make sure there was nobody watching. It looked like the coast was clear. Charlie closed his eyes and balled his fists, allowing stress to flow into his body. He thought about the rumble of his parents' arguments, which seemed to be non-stop these days. The sound of raised voices and slammed doors gave Charlie a feeling like his lungs were too tight and his stomach had been dropped in icy water. He remembered running upstairs and finding the great Catsby lying on his bed, out of his box in the kitchen for once, and burying his face in the cat's fur, sobbing. Charlie recognised the feeling of electricity rippling through his body almost immediately. He was changing, and changing fast. Charlie tried imagining the quickest animal he could think of. A great, soaring bird sprang into his brain. A golden eagle with huge wings designed for maximum speed. He kept the picture in his mind as the electricity built and built, ripping apart every atom in his body and rebuilding them. He could sense himself shrinking and feel wings sprouting out of his back. But then, to Charlie's dismay, he continued shrinking. Smaller than a golden eagle. Way smaller. Maybe I'm going to be a pigeon again, Charlie thought with a groan. Please, not a pigeon, anything but that. No, he realised with relief. I'm even smaller than a pigeon. A sparrow? No, smaller than a sparrow. And anyway, he wasn't growing feathers. He had grown four new legs, some bristly hair and three new eyes on his forehead, but no feathers. His two original eyes had split into thousands of tiny eyes and he'd grown antennae out of his head. Charlie was pretty sure that no bird looked that freaky. He rubbed his two front legs together and buzzed a pair of fragile transparent wings. He was tiny now, the size of a... Charlie was a fly. Guys, thank you so much for today. I hope you guys had fun. You had fun, right? Yeah. That's what I thought. So, guys, uh, thank you for listening. And don't forget to check out the Puffin website at www.puffin.co.uk for more story-packed fun, obviously. Say bye, everyone. Bye. bye. No, I said say bye, everyone. Bye, bye everyone. everyone.